like it is super cold. This is what today looks like outside my window. All the snow that we've got over the weekend because of uh, snowstorm Izzy. Izzy was completely disrespectful. Um, but uh, it started melting like the snow started melting pretty quickly. But anyways, you guys, welcome back to another episode of Dragon Age Inquisition. I am your illustrious hostess, uh, Pixelated Twix. <laughs> Did I forget my name? I think I forgot my name. All right, so um, after all the, the rah-rah that I had to deal with uh, the last couple episodes, I told you guys I'm going really hard on trying to get these episodes rolled out for Dragon Age Inquisition. And I also have a channel update that... Um, will have been posted before this goes up but anyways um so i'm gonna let you guys know what my plans are for this game and then other stuff that's going on with my channel but we already discussed this so that's not necessary anyway so you're here for dragon age i'm here for dragon age let's talk about dragon age uh today i want to hang around the camp and talk to all the companions uh old and new the ogs and the new g's also, if there's any like cutscenes or anything like that, I want to go ahead and take care of that. But I definitely am going to do a lot of talking today. If this is not your thing, you know, I recommend you skipping this particular episode. But I highly recommend you don't because there's a lot of things that you can learn about the characters and their stories and maybe get some more background on this particular story in general. So let's start with... I think this is Cassandra over here. Why I do that, I don't know. Um, so yeah, let's talk to Cassandra and then we'll make our way around. I said let's talk to Cassandra. <laughs> oh. Okay, so, <laughs> sorry, I was drinking some coffee. Um, we have the option to start flirting with people. I'm not going to flirt with anyone at this point. I haven't quite made my decision on who I would like to possibly romance. Um, so, we'll leave it at that. I'm not, so, yeah. Anyways, we're just going to have a a strictly platonic conversation. Um, yeah. I think you need practice dummies made of sturdier stuff. That would be nice. Like maybe iron. Did I do the right thing? What does she mean? Did she do the right thing? What I have set in motion here could destroy everything I have revered my whole life. One day they may write about me as a traitor, a madwoman, a fool. And they may be right. Hmm. What do you believe? What does your faith tell you? I believe you are innocent. I believe more is going on here than we can see. And I believe no one else cares to do anything about it. They will stand in the fire and complain that it is hot. But is this the Maker's will? I can only guess. Hmm. I don't know if I want to ask this question because she doesn't necessarily think that she's chosen chosen because she's Dalish and she doesn't believe in the maker. But I feel like the more she hangs around these outside of her clan, maybe she would understand their belief a little bit more. But not necessarily be converted, perhaps. Um, I don't think this really has anything to do with her her own belief system. I think she's really asking Cassandra. Because she doesn't think that she's chosen. She just thinks that it's coincidence. She's a happy coincidence. She showed up at the wrong time. Um... Not a happy coincidence. It was like an unfortunate coincidence. Showed up at the wrong time. She ends up with this thing in her hand and uh, became a prisoner 
of war and now she's the only one that can save the world kind of thing um so she's questioning cassandra because i don't think i'm chosen do you not think i'm chosen either you don't think i'm the herald of andraste i think you were sent to help us i hope you were but the maker's help takes many forms sometimes it's difficult to discern who it truly benefits mm. or how um, so her decision to implement the Inquisition, I think that's what she's talking about. I have no idea. I feel like that's what Cassandra's talking about is the, the things that she said in motion, um, re-establishing, reestablishing the Inquisition um, and setting them all in this path of, I don't know. So, I mean, basically they're there to try to close this breach in the sky save the world perhaps by doing so and there's still the question of who killed Justinia it's not foolish it's definitely too late to turn back they've got this thing set in motion did she have to do it I think so let's go with this one what's going to happen now now we find allies to help us close the breach if that is even possible. And if there are consequences to be paid for what I have done, I pay them. Nice camera angle. I only pray mm -hmm. the price is not too high. Okay, so it's too late to turn back. It is. Yeah. Isn't it a bit late to worry about it now? We have only just begun. My train is always said, Cassandra, you are too brash. You must think before you act. I see what must be done, and I do it. I see no point in running around in circles like a dog chasing its tail. But I misjudged you in the beginning, did mm. I not? You did. I thought the answer was before me, clear as day. I cannot mm. afford to be so careless again. <laughs> she did kind of have cause. That is the truth. It wasn't like you had no reason to suspect me. I was determined to have someone answer for what happened. Anyone. Hmm. You've said you don't believe you're chosen. Does that mean you also don't believe in the Maker? She does believe in the elven gods, but she's seen some things lately that she doesn't understand. And so she's not ignorant enough to ignore that. Um, but she still feels like the whole thing's a coincidence as far as like why she ended up with this thing in her hands. But I would say an honest answer would be, I don't know. I can't really say. I suppose it doesn't matter now. I have to believe we were put on this path for a reason, even if you do not. Now it simply remains to see where it leads us. Hmm. Yeah. We shall see. Can we talk to her again, or...? It occurs to me I don't actually know much about you. What do you want to know? I'm not sure. Where are you from? Um, make something up, tell her, tell her. My clan never stayed in one place for long, though we primarily roamed the three marches. Oh, I didn't think your people roamed that far north, but clearly I'm mistaken. I'm told some members of your clan might still be alive. Do you intend to go back? Um, hmm. I'm going to... I believe that Ares is a free spirit. Uh, she loves her clan. They're very important to her, but she also wants to make her own path in, in life. Um, and I feel like she would be the one that could make a home wherever she is. She's fit in quite easily with this group of ragtags. So, yeah. Wherever I am is home enough for me. That's how I feel now. After years of tending to business for the divine. Tell me about yourself. I'd like to get to know you better. 
You would? Is that a problem? Not entirely. I'm just curious as to your motivation. She's so suspicious. Yeah, suspicious at you. Just being friendly. Just being friendly. No motivation beyond making things between us less antagonistic. Exactly. As you wish. Okay. My name is Cassandra Pentagon, daughter of the Royal House of Navarra, 78th in line for the Navarran throne. I joined the Seekers of Truth as a young woman and was with the Order until they withdrew from the Chantry. I remained as the Divine's right hand, carrying out her order to form the Inquisition. And here we are. That's all there is to know, my lady. You're Navarran royalty? That is important to know. You're a member of Navarra's royal family. The Pentagasts are a very large clan. Half of Cumberland could say the same. Mm. Really? No, but it feels that way. I have hundreds of relatives so distant they need charts to prove we're related at all. And they have them. Oh, yes. The Pentagasts value their precious blood like it runs with gold. Um... I guess this question kind of means what... I guess the same thing that I thought for Ares is... Cassandra's overwhelmed by her life and needed an escape, so is this why she left? And you joined the Seekers to get away from her? Yeah. It was a life worth getting away from. The Pentagasts are famed for dragon hunting, but few actually pursue the craft. Most are fat and lazy. They pay lip service to the Maker and care only for idle pleasures and past glories. My brother was all that kept me in Navarra. Once he was gone, so was I. Okay, that last line kind of stung. The fact that she was like, they pay lip service only to the maker and um, care about just idle uh, things. Uh, yeah, that kind of stung a little bit. Not going to lie. Um, what happened to your brother? Uh, yeah, let's ask. Tell me about your brother. I would prefer not to speak of Anthony. Okay. Another time, perhaps. Sure. Um, let's ask her about the Divine. So you were the right hand to the Divine? To Divine Justinia, yes. And Divine Beatrix before her, in fact. The position is normally reserved for Templars of the Knights Divine. But my circumstances were unusual. Unusual how? You don't know the story? Thank the Maker. I will tell you if you wish. But it isn't as exciting as some drum it up to be. I'd like to know. The short version is that I once saved the previous Divine's life. My reward was becoming her right hand. Mm, she wouldn't know what that is, so yeah, let's ask. But what does a right hand do, exactly? What is your hand capable of? It gives, it takes, it beckons. It makes a fist. Liliana and I extended the Divine's reach beyond the Grand Cathedral. We went where she could not. After Beatrix, I was tired of the position and wanted to return to the Seekers. But Justinia convinced me to stay. Her vision for the future gave me hope. Um, yeah. You thought she could really change things? Justinia knew the war was coming long before it began. She tried to avert it, but the forces arrayed against her were too strong. Sometimes you have to break a bone so it can be reset. That's where the Inquisition comes in. It was to be the answer. A means to preserve as well as an agent for change. I only wish she had lived to see it. So, we kind of know how she became a red hand, but see if this gives us more detail. So, what's the story about you becoming the right hand? Sweet Andraste, do you really want to hear that? It was, what, 18, 20 years ago? Some still discuss it like it happened yesterday. The tale gets bigger each time it's told. I barely recognize myself within it now. That's how stories work, That's yeah. what happens with stories that become legends. I am not a legend, nor was I then. I was a young woman barely out of training. To hear others tell it, I alone saved Divine Beatrix from a horde of dragons sent to assault the Grand Cathedral. 
Rather impressive for such a young seeker, wouldn't you say? And the truth is? I stumbled upon a conspiracy to kill Beatrix. A Templar Knight Commander was at its heart. And there was a dragon battle at the Grand <coughs> Cathedral that I had help from loyal mages who ran... Sorry about that. My dog decided to be incredibly barky during the conversation, so... Where did we leave off? Okay, yet I became the right hand and they are forgotten. So, you're like, no, what became of the mages? You're still a hero, is she? Impressive, typical of the Tantry. She really doesn't know a whole lot about it. I guess she would kind of know. It's not like the, the elves are completely ignorant of things that go on in all things human. So, or politics, they're heavily involved in it per se, I would, I would think. From afar, maybe. So, I don't think she would be totally, totally ignorant of the Chantry, but I don't think she would know the ins and outs, so t to say that. Um, what became of the mages? Let's ask. What happened to the mages that helped you? They went back to their circles, with rewards and privileges and most holy gratitude. Many of them died at the conquest. Okay, so impressive. An impressive tale. I can see why people enjoy telling it. <sighs> Just wait till they start telling stories about you. So, let's end the conversation I'll let there. You get back to work. I don't want to, like, I think we probably ran out of options. I don't know, but um, who else can we talk to? Colin! Let's talk to Colin. We don't haven't actually really talked to him, so yeah. You there. There's a shield in your hand. Block with it. If this man were your enemy, you'd be dead. Lieutenant, don't hold back. The recruits must prepare for a real fight, not a practice one. Yes, Commander. We've received a number of recruits. Locals from Haven and some pilgrims. None made quite the entrance you did. Mm. Let's go with the... Yeah. At least I got everyone's attention. That you did. I was recruited to the Inquisition in Kirkwall myself. I was there during the Mage Uprising. I saw firsthand the devastation it caused. Sir. Cassandra sought a solution. When she offered me a position, I left the Templars to join her cause. Now it seems we face something far worse. Um, you trust the Inquisition? You left the Templars for this. You believe the Inquisition can work? I do. The Chantry lost control of both Templars and Mages. Now they argue over a new divine while the breach remains. The Inquisition could act when the Chantry cannot. Our followers would be part of that. There's so much we can... Forgive me. I doubt you came here for a lecture. Uh... Okay, that's... Mm. If thought this through, I don't mind. If thought this through. You've given this a lot of thought. I know what happens when order is lost and action comes too late. <sighs> There's still a lot of work ahead. Commander, Sir Ryden has a report on our supply lines. As I was saying. The cook a smile? Okay. Um, where's, where's he at? Oh, there he is. Let's talk to him again. <laughs> yes. Uh, anything I should know? Investigate. Uh, yeah, let's investigate. Tell me about Templar life. I'd like to know more about the Templars. If you need insight into what the Order is doing now, I'm afraid I can't offer more than you already know. Anything else? I will answer as best I can. Okay. Uh. Why did, why did he become a Templar? Why yeah. did you join the Order? I could think of no better calling than to protect those in need. I used to beg the Templars at our local Chantry to teach me. At first, they merely humored me. I must have shown promise, or at least a willingness to learn. Hmm. The Knight Captain spoke to my parents on my behalf. They agreed to send me for training. I was 13 when I left home. That's not very old at all, yeah. 13? That's still so young. I wasn't the youngest there. Some children are promised to be order at infancy. Still, I didn't take on full responsibilities until I was 18. 
The Order sees you trained and educated first. And what about your family? Did you miss them? Of course. But there were many my age who felt the same. We learned to look out for one another. Hmm. Um... What do Templars do? Before coming here, my keeper suggested I avoid Templars. Oh, yeah. Do they do anything besides hunt mages? Mm. Templars protect against the dangers of magic. Before the Order left the Chantry, that meant serving in a circle. They were also tasked with tracking apostates or fighting demons inevitably summoned by the weak or malicious. So, she being outside of like living as a Dalish elf or as a Dalish elf she has her stories especially being a mage that you stay away from Templars she wouldn't entirely understand the circle but she knows what the circle um, all mages do right she being apostate would be in danger of being taken um, into a circle by force she managed to stay away because a lot of times in Dalish clans you're allowed to, I think, have at least two, at the, at the most, two mages, and then the rest must find their own path or leave. Um, I think. I, I could be telling this floor wrong, but I think that's the case. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. So let's ask about what he thinks about mages. What do you think of mages? Are they all a threat? My dog is snoring. I've seen the suffering magic can inflict. I've treated mages with distrust because of it. At times without cause. That was unworthy of me. <laughs> Sorry. I will try not to do so. Here. Not that I want mages moving through our base completely unchecked. We need safeguards in place to protect people, including mages, from possession at least. Okay. Um you lived in a circle? Tell me about vows. Uh, we're in the circle. You've lived in the circle. What was a typical day for a Templar there? <laughs> typical? The last time I was in a circle was right before it fell apart. Nothing was typical. Before that, then? Certain rituals require a full guard. A mage's howling, for instance. I've attended a few. Most of the time, you merely maintain a presence, on patrol or in the circle, ready to respond if needed. Mages pretend to ignore that presence. They're watching you just as closely. So a heroine is when mages, they basically train in the circle to be able to manage or control their powers. Um, and then they go, well, is that like over here? There's some invisible people fighting. Look over here. <laughs> anyway, so that like, you probably, and look at shadows. That's funny. So um, the heroine is like this ritual where the mage goes into the fade, um, and the fade is where mages go like to dream and things like that. Um, and I th think you have to be a mage to be able to enter the fade. Correct me if I'm wrong, but they have to be able to show that they can handle their powers um, and handle their magic by making it out. Uh, safely and not coming back as a demon or whatever um, and it's it's a ritual that all mages have to go through in the circle um, and it determines if you're going to live, die or become um, um, I forget the word uh, basically your your powers are taken away from you I, I, I'm, I'm having a brain fart right now uh, do you not speak to the mages? Do Templars and mages never speak to each other? Some do. But Templars are supposed to maintain a certain distance from their charges. If a mage is possessed or uses blood magic, you must act quickly, without hesitation. Your judgment cannot be clouded. Of course, ignoring one another does nothing to foster understanding. Um... How are Templars trained? What does Templar training involve? There is weapon and combat training. Even without their abilities, Templars are among the best warriors in Thales. Initiates must also memorize portions of the Chant of Light, study history, and improve their mental focus. You enjoy it? Did you enjoy your training? I wanted to learn everything. If I was giving my life to this, I would be the best Templar I could. You were a model student. <laughs> I wanted to be. 
I wasn't always successful. Watching a candle burn down while reciting the chant of transfigurations wasn't the most exciting task. And I admit, my mind sometimes wandered. Totally understand. Uh, tell me about your vows. Do Templars take vows? I swear to the Maker to watch all the mages. That sort of thing. There's a vigil first. You're meant to be at peace during that time, but your life is about to change. When it's over, you give yourself to a life of service. That's when you're given a filter, your first draft of Lyrium and its power. As Templars, we are not to seek wealth or acknowledgement. Our lives belong to the Maker and the path we have chosen. All right. Oh, okay. Uh, oh my gosh. Let's. It's it's the only. It's the only other option outside of that was all. Uh, let's let's just ask. Let's just ask. A life of service and sacrifice. Our Templars also expected to give up. Oh. Physical yeah, temptations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Physical. Why? Why would you? <laughs> That's not <laughs> so awkward. The Templars can marry, although there are rules around it, and the Order must grant permission. Some may choose to give up more to prove their devotion, but it's not required. Okay, let's just go with it. Let's just go with it. Just go with it. Mm -hmm. Me? I, um, uh, no, I've taken no such vows. Make his breath. Can we speak of something else? Yeah, that was all. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Another time, then. Okay, I said I wasn't gonna flirt, but the conversation kind of led to it, so I was like, whatever. Let's let's just go with it. Uh, let's talk to Iron Bull and Krem. Let's talk to Iron Bull first. They've got good form. Cullen's putting his Templar training to good use. Uh, so, yeah. Let's ask about the Did Templar. Did Cullen tell you he was a Templar? He's not wearing the armor. He didn't have to. Might not be a Templar shield, but it's a Templar holding it. He angles the shield just a bit down. Helps direct fire or acid away, so it doesn't spray right into your face. Kalari learned the same thing when we trained to fight to Vinter Mages. Your Templar's doing good work. Um... <sighs> let's see, I'd rather discuss your men. Yeah, I mean, yes he is, but... I guess I guess he yes he is. I'm impressed by what Cullen has accomplished with the troops. Damn right. It takes time to build a group into a team, but he's got their loyalty. Now he just needs them to make a decent shield wall, and they'll be good to go. Okay. The biggest problem for the Inquisition right now isn't on the front line. It's at the top. You've got no leader, no Inquisitor. He's right. I mean, technically, I would say it's a... Uh, group <laughs> it's kind of a team effort um but who do i think is kind of taking the lead would be cassandra maybe even cullen not so much liliana at this point because i really haven't had any inter interaction with liliana but i think more cassandra i cassandra's feel like has been the driving force of this inquisition she's the leader in all but name cassandra's a seeker from what i gather that's a bit like a ben hasrath she's a good hunter and a great fighter she doesn't see the big picture. Too busy searching for answers. My people don't pick leaders from the strongest, or the smartest, or even the most talented. We pick the ones willing to make the hard decisions and live with the consequences. Ah, who knows? Maybe you seal the breach. The Chantry gets off its ass, and all those soldiers go home and get fat. You think? It could happen. It won't. But it could. Uh, okay, let's talk more. Can I help you? Um, tell me of the Ben Hasrath. I'd like to know more about your work with the Ben Hasrath. Ben Hasrath is actually a general term. You've got the secret police who investigate problems inside our territory. You've got the re-educators who take people with problems and fix their minds. Or make them disappear. Oh. And then you've got the spies. Uh, re-educators? How do the re-educators work? Yeah. I only know the basics. Wasn't my area. That said, keep a man awake long enough, ask the right questions, give the right potions, and you can get him to say anything. You don't need blood magic or demons to change someone's mind. 
we're a lot more fragile than we'd like to believe. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Um, is it really that easy? I mean, that is kind of revolting. I mean, it's not kind of, it is revolting, but is it really that easy? I mean, yeah, I suppose. You can alter someone's beliefs that easily. One of my friends was a re-educator. He said that every memory is like the page of a book. When you examine a memory, you're turning to that page. And when you're there, the page is laid bare. Write a few notes in the margins of the page. Erase a word here and there. And your whole outlook changes. I always felt a little weird reading after that conversation. Hmm. I, I don't know. Like, I, I always felt like a... Uh, and here's... It's a feeling. I, I, it's not really based on fact here. At least... No, I'm not going to get into it. But I just want to say that I, I, I guess he might be right. Um, people, obviously, their minds can be changed on their their train of thoughts can be altered. Um, when I say train of thought, like their like moral uh, values, what they believe in, that can be definitely changed. But I think if you're like solely, um, if you're foundation is solid in your belief and it's not just based off feeling I think that you would be harder, your mind would be harder to change. I don't know That's I, I mean I don't know if that's actually what he's talking about but it seems like that is like that his, their, your convictions being changed re-educated um, so I think that if um, but yeah I don't want to dwell on that but I don't know whatever I'm getting into this more than I probably should. But uh, none sound like you. Your job is spying. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really sound like him. I don't think that... I don't know him that well, so I wouldn't... I'll just say your job is spying. Yeah. And you're a spy. Close. I am now, I suppose. But that's not how I started. They sent me to Saharan because they needed someone who could fight and hunt down problems. Mm. That whole island was a sack of cats. Incursions from Tevinta, Talvashath, and native rebels fighting both sides. And in the middle, me, trying to wrangle the rebels and restore order. So Talvashath are Canari like him, but who have um, left the... Canari, uh, the founding Canari beliefs, and become uh, Talvashaf. Like they are basically excommunicated from Canari beliefs, Canari um, culture. They're erased, basically, and they call them Talvashaf. Uh, and it goes deeper than that, but that's like the TLDR of it. Uh, sounds impossible. Sounds fun for you. Sounds difficult. Yeah. I can't imagine that was easy. Nope. I hunted down a lot of rebels, lost a lot of friends to the Vince, or the Fog Warriors, or the Talvashoth. One day I woke up and couldn't think of a damned reason to keep doing my job. Turned myself into the re-educators. So Talvashoth can also include other races besides Canari. So you will see like Elf, Elven, Talvashoth, a humans. So these are just people that they have recruited into their faction. Um, so it's not just Canari. Um, even knowing what they did, that was brave. It worked out well. I mean, I guess it is brave. Was it? I mean, he turned himself into the re-educators. So for whatever reason, he felt like he needed to do that. I mean, it's to do it on your own volition rather than being forced into being re-educated. It was brave, maybe? Not many people would have the courage to do that. I thought about letting some rebel kill me, but I couldn't give any of those bastards the satisfaction. Mm. The Ben Hasarth ordered me to go to Orle, ostensibly as a Talvashoth, and work undercover. That's how I ended up here. <sighs> so we've opened up a can of worms here. Are we going to flirt with Iron Bull after we just finished flirting with Colin? I feel like... I don't think that flirting would be like her her whole nature because that whole thing with Colin was super awkward. But I mean, this guy is pretty formidable looking. I, I think she would might be taken aback by him. I don't know. 
I uh, do. I want to flirt. I don't know. Okay, let's start. Let's I'm go. I'm glad you're here, Boo. Me too. If you ever need to talk more about all this, let me know. Nah, it was a long time ago. Thanks, though. Okay, so it really wasn't that bad. Okay, it was like kind of like. Well, I'm glad you're here. You sound like you went through a lot. If you need someone to talk to. You, I'm here for you kind of thing. It was, like, kind of harmless. What can I do for you? Um, let's discuss Iron Bull. How can we use you? Talk about, yeah, tell me about the chargers. Can we talk about the Bull's chargers? Best company you'll find from here to the Anderfells. In my time with the Chief, we've gone up against everything from bandits to magic trees. We're expensive, but you'll never doubt we're worth it. Want to know anything in particular? Mm. What about your abilities? Do the Chargers specialize in anything from a tactical standpoint? Bull doesn't want us large enough to work as an army. We're better at shock troops as skirmishers. We've got archers for hitting enemy infantry, Dalish with ma more archery, and Skinner and her people on the flanks. Rocky handles fortifications and traps, and Stitches keeps us all fighting. They mostly hold back. Well, I'll okay. lead the frontline fighters with Grim, and the Chief goes wherever he can hit something. Okay, um... Tell me of an interesting job. You said something about everything from bandits to magic trees. I'll admit to some curiosity. Right. Sylvans. That's what Dalish called them. Apparently spirits can possess trees, too. Some noble in the Dales, and they really don't like it when you call them Dalish nobles, had a haunted forest. His family had abandoned the land, but he wanted it back. The chief bought us all axes, and in we went. Between the axes and the torches, the Sylvans weren't too bad. Worst part was the squirrels. Okay, so here's a little glitch. Uh, not a glitch, but a mistake in the conversation. She's Dalish. Obviously, she would know what a Sylvan is. Um, and she would know about Dalish nobles. So, uh, I mean, I'm being nitpicky, but okay. Do you follow rules? Are there rules for how mercenaries operate? If you don't want some noble to treat you like bandits, yes. There's also a code of conduct most companies hold to. We accept surrenders for ransom from mercenaries, nobles, and soldiers wearing a... Our prisoners are treated well, injuries tended. We'd want the same for any of ours who got captured. Okay. We'll talk later. And, uh, you know what? Let's leave some more conversation for later. Actually, I would like to talk to... Um, okay, I do want to talk to the new people. But I want to talk to Liliana. I have not talked to her yet. She's been an OG. Uh, what is this? Is this? Okay. And I, so I definitely want to talk to her. I have not been able to do that. And I know she's over here. Okay. So let's talk to her. Blessed are the peacekeepers, the champions of the just. Blessed are the righteous, the lights in the shadow. In their blood, the Maker's will is written. Is that what you want from us? Blood. To die so that your will is done? Is death your only blessing? You speak for Andraste, no? What does the Maker's prophet have to say about all of this? What's his game? Oh gosh, she sounds bitter. Um, I can't speak for the Andraste, that's so true. She can't. I can't. I speak for no one but myself, and I have no answers for you. You probably don't even worship the Maker. Lucky. He asks a lot. The Chantry teaches that the Maker abandoned us. He demands repentance for our sins. He demands it all. Our lives, our deaths. Justinia gave him everything she had, and he let her die. What was he supposed to do? I mean, it's not even that. It's, uh, okay. She's obviously bitter. Um, and I feel like maybe this was Justinia's fate. You know, maybe this was what was supposed to happen to her. Um, and yeah, you can't blame 
your deity, you, you have to blame the ones that killed her because that's who the blame is. Uh, maybe you should be angry at the people who murdered her. Right. If the Maker doesn't intervene to save the best of his servants, what good is it? <laughs> I used to believe I was chosen, just as some say you are. I thought I was fulfilling his purpose for me, working with the Divine, helping people. But now she's dead. It was all for nothing. Serving the Maker meant nothing. So, her train of thought is that if you're chosen, then you're supposed to like lead this. Um, you're supposed to like lead this great life, but the path that Justinia took obviously was a dangerous path. Being the leader of this Catholic-like um, group of people, she obviously had a lot of power. Probably had a lot of enemies simply because she had power. That's just how it goes. Um, she wanted to make changes that people did not agree with. So there were more enemies on that. Then the fact that something killed her. Um, how do I want to say this? Does that mean that her, what she did in her life meant less because of the way she died? It doesn't. It doesn't negate that. So why she would think that it's it boggles me she's obviously bitter something happened in her life that makes her think this way maybe it's a, a world of loss and she's just, the loss of justinia was the straw that broke the camel's back and she has lost her belief in the maker or andraste um the maker and um she feels like he's powerless because he didn't stop it. But why would, if a person, if, I think like this, if he, the maker is this grand this deity of deities, he ch can choose to who he want. you know what I mean? Like he's good to who he wants to be good to or whatever. Like he makes choices according to his own counsel. So I don't know. That's just my thought. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm, like I said, maybe I'm getting myself too involved in this story. But just my thought, like she obviously is upset about a lot of things in her life. She doesn't have anyone else to blame but the maker. Not necessarily looking at the fact that other like human it, humans, races uh, of human life or um, humanoids <laughs> in this case are involved. They're not necessarily good, uh, obviously, because there's wars and killings and things like that so why isn't it just human nature that you can blame like this is what human nature is doing here you got someone that decided to kill the divine justinia um mages and templars are killing each other there's dead bodies everywhere who's to blame here but the people right it's okay i'm done um why are you telling me this <laughs> these are your problems let me help you. What can you do? I'm not really the best person to talk to. Doesn't the Chantry <laughs> have people for this? <laughs> not exactly. So I should let a priest comfort me? No, this is my burden. I regret that I even let you see me like this. It was a moment of weakness. It won't happen again. Come. To work, then. We will speak later. Uh, can we speak again, maybe? I don't know. I think that kind of conversation left off. Okay, no, we can't. Okay, no problem. So it's true. Okay. Butler has stand on us. I hope my hunch was wrong. You knew him well? Not as well as I thought. Show me the report. Now we can talk to her. Let's see. There were so many questions surrounding Faria's death. Did he think we wouldn't notice? He killed Faria, one of my best agents, and knows where the others are. You know what must be done. Make it clean. Painless if you can. We were friends once. Okay, so apparently someone in their group of spies turned on them. Kills uh, one of their own. So she has to make... She made a decision, Liliana, to have this guy killed. I'm supposed to make a decision here. 
stop her from killing the traitor or kill the traitor. So this is important. This is an important decision here that could decide how Liliana turns out. Um, let me see. I could not step in at all and not, and not interfere. I don't think she would not say anything. Um, judging from the conversation that we had before, I don't think Liliana is making clear decisions. Not that I doubt her expertise. I'm just thinking that she is making her decisions based off emotion. And I understand that her friend was killed, but taking a life the same way, is that going to solve anything? And that is usually my decision here because I don't think that going out and eye for an eye here, yeah, maybe he should be brought, he should be brought to justice, but brought to justice, not I'm going to take things in my own hands. So, yeah. Wait. What are you doing? He betrayed us. He murdered my agent. And you'd kill him. Just like that. You find fault with my decision? I... Yeah. Killing isn't the answer. Just that one? Not to say killing is the answer, because obviously I've done a lot of killing here. So just that decision, yeah. I'm sure most of your decisions are fine. But that one? A little extreme. Extreme? Butler's betrayal put our agents in danger. I condemned one man to save dozens. I may not like what I do, but it must be done. I cannot afford the luxury of ideals at a time like this. Find a better way to handle it. Yeah. I expected better from the Inquisition's spymaster. You've made that point clear. Apprehend Butler, but see that he lives. Now, if you're happy, I have more work to do. It's that innate thought that, you know, uh, I think we're done talking to her for now. It's that innate thought that, yeah, uh, yeah, he probably committed a crime, but bring him in for questioning. See what he knows, why he did it. We need to know motives. There's a better way to handle this, even if it means imprisonment or what have you. Uh, let's go in the Chantry. Oh, there is one thing that I need to do. And, um... Actually, I kind of want to do some exploring in here. Let's go down here. I haven't done any exploring down here, so let's do that. So, yeah, that was just my, my thought on that. And I, I could be wrong. I mean, if you've played this, let me know what your decision was. Um... I'm not going to read that. Maybe you disagree with my decision. Um, and that's fine. I, you know, I'm I making these decisions as if I was actually this elf. And that's really how you play. You can play it that way. Um, but I'm inserting myself in this. Uh, I'm not going to be able to like that. Right? Yeah. I'm not going to be able to like that. Uh, anything else on here? It's just this. So all of these are locked. Ooh, nice shield. I'll take that. No! Uh, why do I do this every time, though? Mm, all right, so I'm going to have to go back up. And like I said, it's... Yeah, of course, it's role-playing. So I'm role-playing as this elf. And I guess I'm inserting some of my moral values in this. But I also feel like she would have... The same being Dalish, and she values life. Dalish elves value life. And I think she would question Liliana. I shall embrace you. In my arms lies eternity. A couple things I want to do uh, at the war table. One being, we had some quests that we, or some troops that we sent out. Plus, there's a quest that we need to finish, and we can only do that at the table. So let's do that. And I think what I'll do is um, continue with the conversation for the next episode. Oh, Colin? Hmm? I, yes. Haven has limited space for our soldiers to train. Perhaps we could set up something over here. 
Where's his head at? Anyways, okay, forces, secrets. Oh, oh yeah, let's do the, uh, where's it at? Connections, no. Um, sterling reputation. Thanks to a few well-placed acquaintances and a careful crafty reputation, merchants will pay the Inquisition 10% more items for items sold to them. No, I want, first of all, the, oh, I can't do this. Wait, where is the... No. Um, I want more... I want this one, but I want more arcane knowledge. Grants 50% XP. Ooh. Yeah, I kind of want that. Enhanced studies. Okay, I, I do kind of want the extra, but I want the more inventory space. This one. Antivian... Um, tailoring. Yeah. Let's take that. Okay. So we got plenty of power, actually. So we can do a couple things here. Um, for one thing, these are that we these are things that we turned in and have responses back. We could do. Oh my gosh, we could do the main two main quests. One of the two. So I don't think you can do both. I think you have to do one or the other. So we just have to decide at this point if we're going to side with the mages. Or if we're going to side with the champions. Or not side, but if we're going to recruit mages to help us or recruit Templars to help us. So it's going to be one or the other. You can't do both. Um, let's get these cleared out. We contact a clan, Lavellen, Dalin, Andaran, Atishan. It does my heart well to hear that you are safe. Our clan was visited by members of the Inquisition who spoke for persuasively of the good work you are doing as well as the fairness with which our kind have been treated by the Inquisition itself. You know that Clan Lavellan has little by way of gold but I gave the messenger some of our healing herbs. As some Salais, as Salais bless us with the abundance in our recent foraging, we would be a distraction if we came to the Inquisition itself. Our hunters arguing with the humans as though they so easily do. Nevertheless, if you need aid, send word and we are with you. Da, uh, Zarath Shiral, keep, uh, keeper, uh, Ista me, Isti me, Mayorthorel, Lavellan. I know I probably butchered that. Um, let's see. Address Noble's concern. Oh, that's that one guy. Commander Cullen, I'm understanding that you're in charge of the soldiers trampling on my lawns, providing food and refuge to the scrabble of filth burrowing into my, burrowing into my land. A plague on you, sir, for spitting in the face of an honest petitioner, for taking advantage of my distress. Did my wretched neighbor, Ban uh, Traft, whisper in your ear, Tell me what he paid you so that I may at least know the price of treachery, sir. My only consolation is that a few of the rank and file have gone to join your farce of an inquisition. In bitterest disgust, Lord Kildarn. This guy was disgusting. Plain and simple. I think we made, the, I know we made the right decision. He was just disgusting. Period. Sister Liliana, thank you for your kind words. I understand the Inquisition cannot be delayed from the grave task ahead, but it was good to know that you were with us in spirit, honoring our beloved divine. Sincerely, Tiran Fergus Kuslin. So, yeah, she wrote a letter to the Kuslins, and uh, we got a long sword. Um, let us send out, let's do the red. Oh! Oh, we already have this, but we can send that to get that one done. Let's build the watchtowers. We could just choose any here. Um, let's All do right. that. Also, some um, some tasks, depending on who you choose, will take less time. So I think Cullen was the best one here. I didn't even look, but there's that. Um, this one, I think, is a mount. Uh, gather coin. Let's do that. We need coin. Celebrate the dragon slain? Oh, yeah. Word is spread about the dragon inquisition killed, the inquisitor killed. Anoint, anoint, <laughs> a note passed on by Josephine. Tell me you sent soldiers to collect the grisly remains. We have nobles clamoring to see the head up close. I should have anticipated this. Gawking is for peasants, but it becomes civilized when done with a glass of wine in one hand and a fan in the other. And another from Ferelden signed Heron. 
My associate Wade is known throughout Thetas for his talent at capturing the glory of Draconic and of the Draconic and the armor he makes. The scarcity of dragon scale means that Wade is all too rarely afforded the chance to work in his chosen medium. But here's a solution. Wade shares his expertise with Inquisition in exchange for the dragon materials collected so far. The only person we can use is Justine, or, uh, Justine, Josephine here. Uh, Wade is in Origins, I think. And he might even be in the second one, I don't know. But I do know that he's in the or in Origins and he's like this uh, armor maker. So let famous armor maker. So let's grab that. And then let's just the bog unicorn. Let's let's do the coin. Up until now, Inquisition forces have had the benefit of the Chantry's deep coffers. Now the Inquisition is forced to seek out its own sources of revenue if it is going to grow further. Trade in and out of Haven is limited at this point, but there are various opportunities to earn coin, provided the Inquisition is willing to focus its efforts on the matter. So, um, we just have... Let's see what we have. All right. All right. So there is that. And we can choose to go. Actually, my, I have two areas that I still need to clear out before I pick open up another area. I think I want to open up uh, or finish up Fallomire, um because it was a disaster. We just totally, yeah. So we're going to clear out the Fallomire and um, I think I want to do the Storm Coast as well. Let me see. What is this? Oh, yeah. So um, that is the one quest. But what is this here? Blackwall. Let's go talk to him. We'll talk to him on the next episode. Uh, we're going to finish talking to our companions and then we'll get back to it. All right. All right. So um, that's our plans going forward right now. Get through the Fallowmire. And I think maybe we'll do another main quest. Uh, we'll... we'll we have to decide if we're going to side with the mages, side with the mages, if we're going to recruit the mages or we're going to recruit the Templars. Being a mage, I feel like she might feel some type of way about the Templars, especially since what they did in Val Royo just kind of took her back. So we'll see. I don't know yet. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of um, Dragon Age Inquisition. I think this might be episode 12. 11, depend, uh, 12 or 13, I don't know, depending on if I stream <laughs> in between this. So, all right, guys, hope you're enjoying. Let me know what you're thinking about the game so far, the gameplay, my commentary, if you agree with me or not. We can have a friendly debate. That's cool. Um, I like to have those um, kind of debates. Why is she growling in her sleep? <laughs> okay. All right, guys, I will talk to you later. Ciao.